Let's be honest, writing a resume is the worst and writing a perfect resume is one of the hardest parts of a job search. You sit there crafting on a sheet of paper all your skills and qualifications and click submit only to never hear back and wondering what went wrong. Was it the one page? Was it the header? You don't know and yet you submit five resumes a day and never get any results. Today I'll be talking about how to write the perfect resume for an entry-level data analyst with no prior data experience. And to do that, I'll be going over three key points and throughout this video, I'll be sharing common data analyst resume mistakes. The first is format. For a data analyst with no prior data work, the resume should really be one page. You can increase the margins, decrease the font, but you really want to get all your work listed on one document because a recruiter spends about six seconds looking at your resume. That means you want to be very strategic about how you're listing your information and what information to include. This is my first resume when I was working at a consulting company. Now imagine you're a recruiter going through hundreds of resumes and you only look at this resume for six seconds. What do you see? You start at the top, you see my name, my contact information, education, and then what? You just move on to the next one because you didn't see anything that was relevant immediately. Now here's a second resume and you start with contact information and then skills. Okay, you see SQL. So then you keep reading because it has the skills that you're looking for. So the lesson here is that you want to be strategic about the order of information that you're listing and also you want to keep the format really simple and clean to read. For an experienced hire, you would want to see the work experience listed immediately after the contact information. But for an entry level data analyst or someone trying to transition into the role, you want to highlight the data analytics skills first and then move on to the work experience. Now with that in mind, this is the order that your resume should follow. The first is your contact information. This includes your location, email, your LinkedIn profile and a data portfolio link. Now for the data portfolio, for an experienced hire, I would say it's not as important because you have the work experience on hand, but for someone transitioning into a data analyst role, the data portfolio link will be really helpful there to showcase your data analysis skills. Under the skills, you wanna highlight your data analyst skills and this really depends on what type of job role that you're applying for. Most likely they're going to require Excel, SQL, and a BI visualization tool such as Tableau or Power BI. And then you'll see Python listed depending on the job role that you are applying for. Now project work and then work experience. If you don't have data related experience, the project work is going to take up the bulk of your resume. You want to make sure that that is really where you're showing that you have the data analysis skills and you want to include them in chronological order. And I'll include more details of what we want to include in here in points two and three. The next is education, and this is where you'll want to include any certificates as well as any degrees you have. And then lastly, we have interest. Now the interest section is debatable. If you are an experienced hire, you don't really need an interest section, but for someone who doesn't have as much data experience or is transitioning into the role, this is a great opportunity to make yourself stand out. Now you don't wanna include all your interests here. You wanna pick and choose the ones that are more relevant to the role that you're applying for and also showcases your skills. So for example, the interest of learning a new language is a great one because it shows that you like learning and you like critical thinking. Now there are three common mistakes you'll see in resumes. The first is grammatical errors, typos, misspellings. And according to Cultivated Culture, 60% of resumes have some sort of grammatical error. And this may be really small, but when I was looking at my older resume, I could see at the bottom that 
I was spelling Google AdWords with a lowercase w when really it's uppercase. And it's not a huge red flag, but any small thing that the recruiter can point out to and notices is a reason for them to reject your resume. So you really want to make sure you get your resume checked by three different peers, whether it's the software that you're using like Microsoft Word that does spelling checks, whether it's a friend, someone professional, definitely have your resume looked over because it is common for it to have errors. The second mistake is having an unprofessional email address. Motley Fool says that 35% of resumes use unprofessional email addresses and they even point to beerpongmaster at gmail.com which I thought was really funny but it's clearly unprofessional and portrays an image that you don't want on a resume. So steer on the safe side and just use your first and last name at gmail.com or whatever email you use and keep it very professional. Now the third mistake is using a photo on the resume. And this one is debatable because depending on the industry you're in, a photo is actually very acceptable, but for the traditional data analyst role, I personally would not use a photo because I feel that that space could be used more effectively. You want to make sure you're including your qualifications or your skill sets and highlight those things rather than an image. So my take is to not include a photo. Now, if you want a copy of this data analyst resume that I am reviewing in this video, you're welcome to it. I am providing a free copy in the description below. I will note that this is specific to a data analyst with no prior data experience. If you were a little more experienced, I'd probably go with a different format, but we can go over that in another video. But for now, please use the link below to download. The second is keywords. Hiring managers use a system called ATS, Applicant Tracking System, and what it does is it filters the hundreds of resumes they receive and filters them based on certain keywords as well as ranking them and organizes the applicants for the hiring manager to view. What does this mean for you? The ATS system filters candidates based off of keywords. So you wanna make sure that you have the keywords from the job description in your resume so that you pass the ATS system as well as being ranked higher. Now, how do you do this? Well, here's a tip. So what you wanna use is a free word cloud generator and I'll include a description in the below and walk you through an example. Here's a job listing I found, and what you'll want to do is copy the qualifications, responsibilities, job description, and paste it into the free Word Cloud Generator. This will then populate the most relevant keywords you'll want to add to your resume, such as data, critical thinking, best practice, and good communication. Now take these keywords and use them on your resume. One of the best ways you can ensure that you pass the ATS system is by using these keywords in your resume. And I know it sounds like a lot of work to do this for each job that you're applying for, but if you want to stand out in the hundreds of resume, this is a great way to do it. The next is impact. When looking at hundreds of resumes and they all say, analyze sales data in SQL, they all start to look the same and none of them stand out. But when you get a candidate quantifying their impact with analyzed a thousand rows of sales data in SQL, leading to an increased processing time of 10%, this stands out because the interviewer can measure the success of the candidate. And it's not necessarily the number of rows the candidate analyzed or how big of an impact he made. It's the fact that he's able to quantify it that makes the difference to the recruiter. And you may be thinking now, as a data analyst with no data work experience, how am I going to quantify the impact of my work? Well, this is where ChatGPT comes in handy. Here are two use cases that I found. The first is, if you're trying to think of ideas how you can write bullet points for your resume coming from a different industry, you can use the prompt, can you write effective resume bullet points for a cleaning assistant applying for a data analyst job quantifying impact? And then ChatGPT will give you a list of examples of how you can quantify your work. And obviously it doesn't know what the impact of your work truly was, but it does give you ideas of different ways you can try measuring and quantifying the impact on your resume. 
Now for projects, you may be thinking, how do I quantify impact? There's another prompt you can use with ChatGPT, which is, can you give me an example of how I can quantify impact for data analyst personal projects without a user for data analyst jobs? And it will list the different types of ways you can quantify your impact. For example, include processing time improvements such as percentages or reduced errors. There are several ideas here that you can use for your projects. The impact is really where you're going to stand out in your resume and you want to make sure that you're quantifying it rather than simply stating it. Writing a resume is not easy, but when used correctly, it will get you a data analyst job. My recommendation is if you're struggling to find content to put into your resume, don't worry so much about writing it, but really building your resume. You want to make sure you go and have enough projects, maybe volunteer and see if you can actually have a user use it to quantify your impacts and build a resume that will actually get you the data analyst role. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I'd love to hear in the comments which of these resume tips were helpful for you. Thanks, and I will see you on the next video.